Hey you guys, here's a haphazardly thrown together video to reteach the concepts from 6.0, which is our exponent rules. So 6.0 is an Algebra 1 review day. Um, a lot of these concepts you might notice that you remember from Algebra 1, which is awesome. Um, I'm just going to go over the most important aspects of this rule. The first one is the zero exponent property. When we wrote it down, we wrote a to the zero power is equal to 1. The gist here is anything, any base here, raised to the zero power is always equal to 1, no matter what. So if I were to ask you what's 314 raised to the zero power, you should automatically say 1. If I say what's Miss Q, that's me, raised to the zero power, you should say 1. Okay, anything raised to the zero power is 1. Now, when, what happens sometimes is that we get combinations of this equal to 1. And what I mean by that is, let's say I have 8 to the 0 over x to the 3rd. Okay, well, the whole thing does not equal 1. No. The first part equals 1. Let's wait for it. Okay, this part right here is equal to 1. Not the bottom. Makes sense. So if I had, let's say, this time 27 times x times y to the 0 power, this is not equal to 1. This piece right here is equal to 1. So it would be 27x times 1, which is just simply 27x. Okay, that is the first part, the first rule for today. The second rule for today is the negative exponent rules. So negative exponents make me sad. Look, they're so sad. And we want to make them positive. The way we make them positive is by using their reciprocal, a.k.a. putting them in from the numerator into the denominator, or from the denominator into the numerator. I could put over 1 if I wanted to, but it's, it's unnecessary. You don't need that part, okay? This is the negative exponent rule. I want positive powers. I do not want any sad exponents, okay? I want them to be happy and be positive. So if you see negative exponents, you need to move them down to the bottom. Anywhere you see negative exponents, you're just going to flip them, flip them to the other side. The product of powers, this is when we start getting into mad spam. So mad spam, okay, is a acronym, sort of, that helps you remember what to do in these situations. If I'm multiplying my bases together, I add the exponents. If I'm dividing the bases, I subtract the exponents. And if I have powers raised to another power, I multiply the exponents, a.k.a x squared times x to the 6th power. If I'm multiplying the bases, multiplying the bases, add the exponent. So it should be equal to 6 plus 2, x to the 8th power. The bases always stay the same, and you can only combine bases that are the same. Now, if I had division, x to the 6th power divided by x squared, I would just simply need to subtract those powers. This would be x to the 4th power, 6 minus 2. Let's say, for instance, though, I have x squared over x to the 6. I'm still going to subtract them, but then I'd get x to the negative 4. And just on the slide before this, I said we can't have any negative exponents that make me so sad. So to make them positive, we're going to go up here. We're going to flip this over. There's nothing in the numerator, so I put a placeholder of 1 and then make that power positive. Now, the last rule that we have for exponents is the confusing one for most people, so just hang on. We can do it. It's the power to a power rule, which says that if I have a power and I'm raising it to another power, I all I have to do... I don't know why that won't erase. Pretend that's not there. Ooh. Okay. All I have to do is raise all the powers inside the parentheses by that outside power. What? Okay, here's what I mean. This one was on your notes x squared raised to the fourth power, all I have to do is multiply these together. This would be x to the eighth. And then we get into tough problems where there's multiple things inside your parentheses. Let's say I have 5 times x times y squared, all raised to the third power. Now, this will look like distribution. It is not distribution. But I'm going to let you think it like that, okay? I have to distribute, essentially, it's not distribution, that 3 to every single exponent. We told you last time that the invisible exponent is always 1, so if you do not see an exponent next to a number or a letter, it has an exponent of 1. And MadSpam tells me that the, since this right here has powers raised to another power, or I see parentheses with a power, I have to multiply. Multiply, okay? 
So the final answer here would be 5 to the third power, y to, or, bleh, x to the third power, and y to the sixth power. Now, when we were doing these problems, if you put this into your computer, if it was computer answers, your computer would tell you it's wrong. And that is because if we ever have numbers themselves, you've got to multiply them out. Letters you can leave as letters and exponents, but numbers you have to multiply out. So 5 to the third power, 5 cubed, is 125. You could check your brain or your calculator for that. And this would actually be an answer a computer would accept. Hopefully these helped you with your exponent rules. Um, if you need more help, come to tutoring.